Hello, Amy. How are you? Oh, hello. I'm so happy to, to see you and, and to be here with you. This is so exciting. I'm so proud of you. Oh, come on. That's really sweet. You, no, you... I, I, I'm really proud of you. We talked about it when you were on my show and the fact that you are authentic, knowledgeable, passionate. Those are the three keys to success and, and you're killing it. So I'm really proud of you. You are too. And thank you so much because you were one of the first people who asked me to be on your podcast. And you know, when you're like, I was like, oh, maybe I'll ask her like, you know, when I get going and maybe I'll ask her. And then you asked me and it was just one of those moments that just like makes you go, okay, okay. This is really cool. Like the person I thought I would wait a bit. To love it. And I, think, oh, I love it. I want to talk about this with you later because you've had some famous people on your podcast and I don't think you believe in waiting until you're ready. That's one thing. That's one thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You like, got to just cannonball baby. You just got to do it. Yeah. How did you come up with the cannonball? How did that, how did that come about? I'm going to go back to sort of a bit more about you, but just off the top, how did you come? come yeah, up? no, I think that's a great question because I think part of it was honestly, cause I was always a competitive swimmer my whole life. So water, I'm a Pisces. I think it all just comes together. Um, but you know, I, I, I'm very much a visual person when I speak, when I do all of that stuff. And, um, you know, I was sitting around one day and thinking, you know, what were we like when we were 10? Mm -hmm. And we just, you know, we were so fearless, right? We had that fearless exhilaration to do anything. And we didn't really care who was watching us. We would do it again. Even if we made a mistake, we might get nervous and embarrassed, but we would do it again. And we were, you know, it was okay to be uncomfortable. That was, that was just part of being young and fearless. And uh, so I kind of equated that to this cannonball. And I pictured myself, you know, as a 10 year old jumping off and, and, and making the splash and coming up and, and having my friends say, oh, that was good, but do it again and, and running back and doing it over and over. And then all of a sudden at these different phases of our life, and it, it happens at different stages. And it's not just necessarily midlife, it's, it's different phases of life where you kind of get stuck and you get stuck on those rungs of that ladder, climbing up to that high dive. You so want to do it, but this fear sets in and you're like, ooh, might be uncomfortable. Mm. I don't want to do this. I'm going to lose 10 pounds in the next year. So I'm just going to procrastinate, put it off. Right. Those are big words that we tend to do as women procrastinate or you want it to be perfect. And so the whole cannonball thing was, I want women to feel like, you know what? I still have that. That's still here. This fearless acceleration is still here and I can do this. So I want them to jump off and be uncomfortable and get over that fear and not worry what you're looking like getting out of the ladder. You know, that's one thing you think about when you jump in a pool, you're like, oh, now I got to pull myself out on this ladder. That's not comfortable. Yeah. And, and make your big splash because you've earned it. So I, that's really where cannonball came from. Well, and not letting, you know, when you were 10, you didn't, you didn't know what could go wrong. So you didn't trouble right. constantly and with, so yeah. measuring caution yeah. between caution and then, you know, what we're looking for an excuse to not go. And you mentioned also the losing weight, because I think a lot of us have been living, <laughs> have been living our lives, like in 10 pounds, I will do this thing. And I know I stopped doing that when I was 30, because I was just like, I became a columnist and I had to have my picture in the paper and I started yeah. reading about it. And I was like, look, this is, it's now, right. There's no 10 pounds, It's now. but a lot of women yeah. have lived the entire time, 10 pounding it, or they lost it. And they went back. Like, what do you see that too? Oh, absolutely. And now that I'm doing a lot on camera, I've always done TV segments all over and I'm, I'm a speaker. So I speak all over the place. So I'm always on stage and I have to be honest with you. And I, this is, this is, I love your podcast because you can be authentic and genuine and, and, you know, show some vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, I was a guest on the Mel Robbins show a couple of years ago when she wow. launched and, you know, I'm down at CBS in New York city and, and, uh, I did the segments and it, it was great. And then they were going to air. And I remember one of my very best friends, one of my best friends to this day. And she said, Amy, like they're, they're teasing it up. Like it's going to air. Why aren't you telling people about this? And it was my own insecurity because I'm on camera all the time. I don't like to watch myself. No, no one does. Like that was super, super hard for me because I have my own insecurities around, oh, you know, I mean, they always say it adds 10 pounds. I already have 10 pounds that I wanted not to be on camera. I always laugh with the, like our production team now. I'm like, put on that, you know, that, that little slimmer lens that you have. Um, but you know what, then you just get over it. But I had a very hard time um, watching myself oh, because tough. this, and I think we all do that as women. We, we, that's just innate. And you just have to get over it and saying, this is who I am. This is who I am now. It is. I'm so grateful to be here right now in this moment. 
and just rock it. You know what? Because no one else is looking. Brene Brown says it best. Who's your biggest critic when you're standing in the middle of an arena? Yep. We are, right? It's, it's funny that you say that because I was at a team building thing at Expo last week with, I work on another project. That's my, my day job. And I have a great yeah. team of like really smart kids. I call them kids. They're 25. But I was saying I had, uh, I had a friend who passed away and I was putting some pictures of us online and I was set struggling between the pictures of us that I loved and the pictures of me that I didn't like, and, you know, and I, because he's not here anymore, I chose the ones and I put the ones up of me. And I said to them, you know, because I have pictures of me that I like, I have a way that I look that I like, and I have a way that I look that I don't like. And right. I thought this was, you know, you think everything's just you, right? You think you're the only human that's ever had this feeling. <laughs> well, all these young, they're like, yeah, we all have that. And I said, we I all have that. We, we need to share the pictures we don't like and the pictures we do like. And I bet neither of us will see one difference, right? Like I exactly, <laughs> exactly. We got to stop doing that. I know. Yes. And, and I think it's really being intentional about realizing that we are here right now in this moment. This is so cool that I get to share this space with you right now in this moment and, and just own it. You know, you are who you are and the whole 10 pound thing or 20 pound thing or whatever it is, just, you know, do things that are healthy and right and, and all of that. But, um, but just rock where you are in the moment. Cause you never know. Okay. So to go back, you lived overseas and you moved back home and you had sort of, you're around 45, which was a very tough time for me as well. Um, oh. Yeah. It's a really, the forties are that. Ugh. So you moved home, you lost your parents. I'm just recapping a bit. You had one kid go off to college. Now you've got two. What happened? Mm -hmm. Where were you in that time? Wow. That's, that's like, that's a, I love your questions. Um, that was a really tough time for me. Yeah. I'd lived abroad, you know, I've moved 11 times. This was the 11th move to sit right here in this. And I, I told my husband, um, funny, funny, fun fact is, <laughs> not so funny, but my mom passed away about four weeks before I was moving back to the U S after being gone for six years, very unexpectedly. Um, there is a whole lonely heart. This is all over the, the news in the U S how, especially heart you know, during February, a lonely heart. My mom is the epitome of dying of a broken heart. She died about four weeks before I was to move back. She was supposed to be coming to Germany to see my daughter graduate from high school. And she passed away and I couldn't get myself on a plane to come and house hunt in the US. I couldn't do it. So this house I'm sitting in, my husband bought. We hey, I had never seen it. He did a good job. I trusted I him. I didn't have it in me at that point. I like you said, you know, it was I take I go back to those times because, you know, living in Germany, it was a, a flight across the pond. Those Lufthansa flights are never late. I mean, they are, you know, Germans are very litigious anyway. So those flights are never late. Both flights for when I had to get on by myself to fly back from my parents. Um, they were late. They really I didn't make it back, forever. which is really, really hard. So I moved in this house. One's off to college. One's going to American school, high school. And my one is starting sixth grade who had never been in American school besides preschool before we left. Who knew the kid didn't know the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Not, it didn't win mom of the year there or American money. But anyway, I was sitting here in this house and it was quiet. And I remember thinking, wow, where did I go? Like, all of this is a blur. Right. Um, I've done all these things. I've always written. I've always immersed myself in my community. I've coached swimming. I've done all of these things, but what am I going to do now? And that was my moment when I said, we're all talking about these things. We're all living these stories. If I can share inspiration to others and get them to move the needle somehow, that's what I want to do. And those were my moments. It was really a quiet reflection of sitting here um, when I moved back, and of course I said, you know, I lost my mom, which was very unexpected, moved in this house, couldn't unpack boxes. I'm telling you that if you would have seen it, there were boxes stacked. My sister had to fly out and just say, come on, Amy, we got to get this house unpacked. Um, it was a tough, it was a really tough time for me. My blood pressure spiked, just anxiety. Even ex, just even being an expat and then coming back home is a huge Repatriating, transition. repatriating is really, really we underestimate how oh, hard that huge. is. We think we're just going to come back in and be like, oh, I'm back. I'm no. back. No, my oh, good no. friends, my good friends <laughs> moved back to BC. I went through this with them for a year, all four of them. And I, it's like, it's a year at least. And so you feel yeah, like you kind of know where you are. So I'm just saying on top of everything you had been yeah. in that and you're repatriating, it's massive. Oh, yeah, so you're like, you can't unpack. I know that feeling when you just can't do it. You're, oh. you're re-stripping, you can't. Okay. <laughs> 
So, so how do you, because when you hear this, people just see you now and it just seems like you, what, but what will you have, you know, your, your blood pressure is bad. You're feeling no yeah. energy. You're grieving. Anxious. How do you take yeah. anxious, anxious, anxiety? So many people are anxious. How do you take, what is, because it's overwhelming. What do you do first to get? Yeah. yeah. You know what? I, I, I am very grateful to have amazing friends all over the world. And that's a part of, of, of who I am. I, I feel that, you know, when you, I'm a big person about self-reflection and looking back, not looking back and reliving that, but looking back and realizing what you have in your life and those people that you have in your life that are really your cornerstones that will, you can call on a bad day and say, Hey, listen, I really need you. And I have an incredibly supportive husband. And, uh, and we kind of walk through of what do I want to do? Where are my gifts? Where can I add value? Where can I challenge myself, learn more and really keep forging ahead? I didn't want to get stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, that was really it. And so I took time to really self-reflect what I call a highlight reel and look back at all the things I had done. And they all kind of came to this point where it was like, I'm pretty good at this. Like, I'm really good at sharing stories and interviewing. I was a journalist. I was a broadcaster. I know all of that stuff. Um, I love, I was a coach, swim coach. So that all goes with inspiring people. So it all came together. And I thought, all right, this podcast thing, I'm going to do this because I know there are incredible people out there that need to share their stories and their advice. And that's going to move the needle for other people. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm meant to do. So you started with a podcast. You're like, I'm just going to do the podcast. How, yeah. do, when you, when you were trying to do the podcast and you were on YouTube, I, I was watching your Ted talk, but we'll get to that later. We are on YouTube and you're working it all out and you're figuring it all out. And did you have voices in your head that are like, what were the, what were the nasty voices? <laughs> Those like little, the little Amy that sits right here. That's like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I shared it in my, in my Ted talk, you know, I, I was, I put an ad in a, not an ad, but I, in a Facebook group. And I just said, Hey, does anybody know how to run a podcast? I had no idea. I was books on tape. I didn't even listen to podcasts when I wanted to start one, but I had read something in the New York times, like, Hey, this is cool. Like, I think I can do this. And so this young guy came over and, you know, that's another story, but I could have been his mom and he called me Mrs. Schmidt. And I'm like, Oh no, no, no. Just call me Amy <laughs> and walk me through how to do this. And he started kind of saying, well, this is what you need. And I'll just get you all set up. And I said, no, no, no. I really want to learn this like soup to nuts. I want to learn how to do this. And so I was all, you know, I, I went to the Apple store. I bought a mic. Oh, you need to podcast. What do you really need? You need a great mic. Mm -hmm. That's really it. You need to know how to use GarageBand for basic editing, but it's not that hard mm -hmm. and you can figure anything out because YouTube and everything else. So I learned how to do it. And I went to record my first podcast sitting in my little office and um, I went through it. It was a solo cast. It was my introduction. I'm like, yes, this is so easy. Like this, oh, this is, this feels so right. <laughs> and I got up and I was like, yes, nobody was in the house. Thank goodness. Cause they saw me like, they'd see me dancing. And I went back to find the audio file. Cause you know, afterwards you got find an audio file. I mean, I'm basic, you pull it over, you save it on your desktop. And I'm like, hmm, this is really interesting because can't seem to find that epic podcast I just recorded that was going to win Grammys. You know, I mean, that's how good I thought it was. Well, <laughs> Right there, I was like, mm, okay, this lady can't remember to push record. She can't find her glasses half the time. She uses her phone flashlight to find her phone, even though she's using the flashlight on her phone. How are you possibly? It's true. It's multiple times. There's another story on that I would love to share because people might find it relatable. Um, we'll circle back. But, you know, you do. Then you think, okay. I'm an idiot. And it, you know what's so funny? is that I wasn't worried about who was going to listen. Like I was more worried about myself saying, how am I, like, I can't do this. Like, I didn't even care if anybody was listening. It was more about in the moment. It was like, I can't even remember how to push record. How am I possibly going to get guests on? But, you know, you just overcome that. And, and I sat back down in the chair. I looked at my pictures that I had in front of me. It was like, you know, my husband and my kids and picture of my parents. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to record again. Yeah. I always, that, that has happened to me several times over my career. And there's a definite, like, um, uh, the, this five stages of grief, you know, like you're in denial at first, you keep looking for right. it and then, you know, all that. Yeah. But I always, I've come to think over 25 years of journalism. Okay. There must've been something about it. I needed to start over. 
Like there must have, I just, I, I make it like a sort of woo woo thing. I'm like, okay, yeah. it's gone. And uh, it's gone. <laughs> you can't, yeah, it, it's water under the bridge. Don't sweat the small stuff and just do it again. Yeah, do it again. It's and nobody would have known unless I make it part of my story, but that's really who I am. I want people to know that because I don't want people to think, oh, how does she do that? I mean, it's, it's like, it's perfect. It's not. It's so perfectly imperfectly perfect is that what it is perfectly yes. imper imperfectly perfect yeah I mean it, it a work in progress is what I call myself I'm every day is a new day of learning something well that's what I love I'm curious about this part of it because I am much more like that and I have always been like that like I have always been yeah. the person who said oh I'm nervous about this oh I'm not confident and I felt like there was something wrong with me my entire career because I'm around people who are you know but um I think it works. You know, I think, I think people like it, but there are still people and people I work with, you know, I, I interviewed someone and we both forgot we even interviewed each other. And I, I said, I'm going to say that she was like, no, no, please don't say like, please don't say that. Um, please don't say I forgot. And I'm like, okay, fine. But like, we're in menopause and it would be cool. We forget. <laughs> so what do you think? Like when you're real like that, I find people like it. I think it makes it disarms people. But there, are, think, there is a whole other school of thought that you don't show those weaknesses. Like, what do you say to that? Right. right. Um, I show my weaknesses. It's, it's, it's who I am. I feel that at this age, we've earned, we've earned it. I mean, we need to be authentic. We can't pretend to be somebody else. That's what we did in our thirties. You know, we were always trying to pretend to be somebody else or we'll get there faster if we don't work together. You know, I'm not going to ask for help. That's going to look like a weakness. <sighs> we got to just kick all that to the curb and be who we are and, and share our vulnerabilities and let people know that, Hey, I'm a work in progress, just like you. And if there's something in your life that you really want to do, whether it's going back to school or rekindling a relationship or, you know, starting a gardening class or going to a yoga class or just getting out in your neighborhood and meeting somebody, just do it, you know, just start. That's what we have to do. And, and share the, share everything. Everything for me is a, I look at it as a win. It's a big win, a small win, everything in between. And um, those wins can be failures too, because you learn from them. Every failure you do, you learn something and you look at it and, try, and you know, you just transfer that into a win. So um, I'm very, I'm very authentic. I mean, a lot of people say, well, you were born and raised in Wisconsin. Maybe that's it. Maybe there is something to the Midwest. I don't know, but it's who I am. And, and I think people really, really value that, especially at the age we are. And I think even for younger women looking at what we're doing, because when you're younger, right, we're, we're just, we are just trying to get there the quickest we can and do it by ourselves. And I hope that the younger generations that are watching, I, my daughter, who is 24, she sees what I'm doing. And I hope that someday when I'm gone, she can really reflect on, Hey, my mom wasn't perfect. You know, she tried, she failed. It was okay. She picked herself back up and kept going. I said this to my, my best friend just this week. She misses her mom. I'm as you miss your mom and I miss my mom and yeah. you cry about that. I used to find my mom crying about it her mom died like 25 years before. And I was a 17 year old. I'd find my mom crying in August. And I would think, you know, you don't know anything. I think, God, she's still right. crying about that. <laughs> but, of yeah. course, but I said to my friend, let your daughter see you crying because she, this, we can't hide this stuff. This isn't like doing anyone any I good do. to pretend that you're not crying. She's probably exactly. crying too, right? We need to just, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. How are you about grief? How do you, how do you handle grief? Mm. Boy, that's a great question. Um, grief is is ever present. I think, I think it's ever present. I know there's five stages. I've had people on my show and talk about it. Um, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to pick up the phone and just call my mom or call my dad. Um, it it's something that and, and I think. To be true to who we are, we have to take those moments when we need to grieve, no matter when they pop up, those are times when you just need to stop and really just, whether it's cry, laugh, share a story with somebody that's sitting next to you, even if it's off topic and you say, you know what, this just came into my mind and I want to share this, or this reminds me of my mom, keep those memories alive. Um, but grief is, is, and you know, what? it's seasonal for me. Okay. I think um, there are certain times and I've kind of tracked it. Um, I'm an analytics girl, so I've never was an analytics girl, but of course, having a podcast and everything else, you got to know what they like to hear, all of that stuff. And I've kind of tracked my emotions and um, there are certain seasons when it's more difficult for me. 
Uh, and it's funny because, you know, I walked past the mirror. Was it earlier this week? We've been doing a lot of filming and, you know, you have a makeup crew that's putting all this makeup on. And I walked past the mirror and I got a glimpse of myself and I saw my mom mm. and I really saw her like, oh, uh, and um, mm, it was a moment for me. Yeah. It was a moment for me. Yeah, it I was. Did. It was like, she's here. She's cheering me on. I miss, I miss my parents. I miss some friends that I've lost dearly, but they're always there and they come at these unexpected times and you just have to take time to really treasure those moments when you know they're there with you. Yeah. I've been doing that a little bit more, like just being like, okay, <laughs> just with people yeah. I trust. I, I don't know. I yeah. thinking about it less, like they're they're dead and they're gone. It's just that they're, they're around you, but you can't engage in the same way. It's really helped right. me in the last couple of years, but I know what you mean yeah. about the seasons. Cause here there's, it's always sunny and it's either hot or right. a little you bit. Get the sun. But yeah. when I go home in the fall is when I lost my mom and when the smell in the air, the changing of the leaves, it's so melancholy. Yeah. And I haven't yeah. been home at that time in a while, but it hits me hard. Like it's just conjures up the whole, all, all of that. So, yeah. 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 It's yeah. when the tulips bloom. Cause we went to Kuchenheim gardens and I took my mom and we went to the tulips and walked through the mass, you know, rows and rows of these beautiful tulips. So whenever I start seeing tulips coming up, I'm like, oh, I just think of my mom. So yeah, we got, we got to just take that time. Right. When I saw the glimpse of her in the mirror, I was like, she's here. She she's knows here. what I'm doing. She gave that to you. Okay. So we'll go back. So you had the podcast. How did it s snowball your cannonballing? How did your cannonballing snowball? <laughs> I think, oh yeah. You know what? I, I've been so lucky to have so many great guests and and from those guests really form friendships and relationships. Relationships are key for me. I think anybody that knows me knows that I'm extremely loyal. <laughs> My dad used to say loyal like a German shepherd, which isn't probably a compliment, but they're very loyal. And you know what? I'm very trusting. And I think that that is how I have built what I've built in the time that I've built it. A lot of people say, how'd you do that? You know, how'd you go from a hundred downloads to thousands of downloads? How do you do that? Um, it takes time, but it also takes that trust. And I knew that I was confident enough for the ask because I figured at my age, at 50, I'm going to ask these people to be on the show. And if they say no, I'm not going to take it personally, right? We got to take that out and not worry about it and just do the ask. And if they can't do it, fine. But if they do, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to really build a relationship and learn from somebody else. And that's how I looked at it. And I really think that's, I attribute a lot of my success to that because a guest to me is not just a guest. A guest is actually forming a new relationship that could become a friendship that could become who knows what. And that's how I look at it. Yeah. Cause you've had some famous, you know, I mean, you've gone after some like Joan London and Julie Moran. Oh yeah. She's love. so fabulous. Yeah. So fabulous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's sat next to her. We recorded, she was in Connecticut, sat right next to her. I mean, she's an icon and, um, and I think another thing that I I've done is I really just, after I record, I just sit there and just take a deep breath and think about everything. Cause I learned something when we get done with this podcast today, I'm going to have learned something about you that I'm going to remember, you know, and I'll be able to think all of a sudden I'll be going along, you know, six months from now and I'll be like, Oh, Anne-Marie, I remember when she said that. So it's all about, <coughs> um, cadence I keep and I think the relationships and and certainly I've gotten no's for sure I mean oh, yeah. you know people are going to say no I don't have time circle back you just keep going and so don't be afraid to do that thing and step out and just and ask did you have a plan okay did you have a plan that you wanted to write a book that you wanted to do a TED talk or the podcast like did you have a it looks like you have unfolded a master plan. Yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a bit of a planner. Yes. But the book was uh, book was something I was always writing because I constantly journal anyway. So I was always writing things and, and really how that book all came about was, and I, I don't know, people may have heard this about me before. Cause I, I talk about it a lot is when I flew back to the U S from Germany and my dad was not conscious, you know um, I was tired. Of course, you know how it is with, with the uh, jet lag and our flight was delayed and and I was emotional and my dad, I, I was worried that he didn't know I was there. All my other siblings, I'm one of five and all of their spouses were there and I was there by myself. And I had my first real encounter with anxiety and, and what I would call a real panic attack where I felt like the walls were closing in and I had to excuse myself from the room 
And I barely made it out the door and just sat on the cold hospital floor with these bright lights. I remember it. I can almost feel the floor and just couldn't get my breath. And uh, my brother came out, one of my brothers, we're all very close. And he put his arm around me and he just said, Amy, one dad knows you're here, but two, write that book, finish that book. That's what he'd want you to do. It's, it's, it's your stories. And, and that's, that's your voice. And that's what you need to do. And it was at that moment that I really came back and, um, you know, sat down and really started writing and writing for me. I think a lot of, I think a lot of people will say it. A lot of women say it. I don't know how many women, men admit it, but when, it was really therapy for me. I wrote the book and it was a release of so much. And also, you know, kind of tips and tricks about, Hey, you can do this too. I did this, try these things. Maybe this will help you. So the book was always a work in progress, but um, I found a fantastic publisher and she was great. And my editors were great. And, and I wanted it to stay in my voice. So people may read it and say, you know, oh, that's not grammatically this, that, or the next thing, but it's me. Yeah. And I think that's why I wrote it. It just seems like you, you have to have always had confidence though. You have to have always, yeah, you've been, a yeah. yeah. I've been asked that a lot. I think I've always been confident. Um, yes. Yes. I was voted knows everyone and everything in high school. <laughs> so I always knew everybody. I never really fit into a specific clique. Um, and I was swimming all the time anyway, but I always knew everybody. And I, always, I was a big relationships person um, that comes very easily for me, I guess. And, um, you know, I think confidence. Yeah. Are you born with it? I guess. In so oh, there's my son. He's walking in right there. Sorry, Caleb, I'm recording. Um, <laughs> that's okay. You can cut that okay. part out, but there he is. He's my only one in the nest yet. Um, I think I was born with confidence. Yes. But I also was raised in a home that perfectionism was very much the thing. Like we needed to be very perfect. Mm -hmm. Little funny story was remember report cards we used to get like in the mail mm -hmm. and they would come in an envelope and they'd have that little plastic seal on them. And I knew that I was close to getting a D in geometry. Okay. I knew it. Mr. Spearbreaker was my teacher. I was not doing well in geometry. And I got home, you know, I like left early, like I'd study hall or something last period. And I ran home, got it out of the mailbox and I wanted to unseal it. And I wanted to see if I was really getting a D. So I put it in the microwave. Yeah. Not the sharpest okay. thing to do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we were always raised. Yeah. True story. We were always raised with this kind of, I was so worried. <clears throat> I had such anxiety over not being perfect. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I, I don't know. I lost my train of thought with but that. I feel like you've them. had that your whole life. And a lot of women have had that, but you confidence. Been, yeah. You've been able to sort of, I don't know. You seem to like you've been able to, cause you, you're able to be authentic. So you're able to not be perfect now. How do how are you able to, yeah. how are you able yeah. to reach that? And I think, you know, I think everybody has confidence. It's just layers like an onion. You just have to peel back the layers until you finally find your core confidence. Again, everybody has, um, can be a specialist about something in their life. They don't have to just be a generalist. They can be a specialist about something in their life. And what's that one thing that is your real gift? And you really hone in on that and you find your confidence around it. And then things just continue to unravel. So I've, I've always been confident. I, I, I have more confidence now than I've ever had, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe that does just trend with age, but um, I guess because, right, you probably would agree. You kind of just let go of that the, the word care is too strong. I still care deeply, but you kind of don't care in yeah. a way. Yeah. Yeah. Care is not the right word, you know, I, but yeah, no, because you do care, you care more deeply about some things, but I think you yeah. stop caring about the things that you should never have probably cared about right? so much, invested so much time and energy in. Yes. Do you yes. feel like part of the hormonal shift of like going through perimenopause and menopause oh. have been part of this? Like, how has that been for you? Boy, that, you know, I'm perimenopausal um, and definitely, definitely on. I mean, it, it is like full on. And then, you know, how you're supposed to go 12 months without having a period. And I went like three and I'm like, yes, I think it's over. And then <laughs> me too. <laughs> like, darn it. I know. Really? You know. I have to start the clock again. Oh, who says that? It's somebody that always says, oh, we got to start the clock again. But I, this perimenopause stage is really, really challenging. But I don't know if it's because I'm in the space. Maybe you find this too, that 
we talk about it. Like my friends, I mean, it, it's, it's a weekly conversation with a lot of people, whether they've had a hysterectomy or they're postmenopausal or they're going through it. We are sharing like so much more. My mom would have never done that. No, no, no. My I sisters didn't. even who are in their sixties would have never done that. I don't think they did that with their friends, but this is like, we're like an open book. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I can't meet you last week. I had to cancel on a friend. I was like, I'm sorry. I just, I just can't. I like, I am really not feeling great. Yes. And, and what is it? You know? Just a general, I've had this today. That's why I was saying to you, don't like, I, I just a general malaise. It's the only way yeah. I can describe it. A general it's malaise, a lack of motivation to do any of the things that I need to do that I would normally enjoy doing. Just today right. is the day when it would get all done. And it's just not, I don't know what it is. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. But how lucky are we that there's so many incredible companies now and all this research that is, is once again, moving that needle around providing relief for women. It's, it's, it's amazing. Just in the, in the few years that I've been doing this, the amazing companies that are out there really have just forged ahead in such a way that now you talk about it. I mean, my husband's like, okay, I don't need to know that. And I'm like, well, yeah, you kind of do because it's me and I'm going through it, but boy, have we paved the way for the generations behind us. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so much easier. I mean, I just had, I do, I do TikTok and I just had a kid who was 19 who stopped me and said, I love your TikTok videos. And I told my mom and he signed up for your newsletter. And I was like, what? That's crazy. How cool. That's going to be a kid who's just not weird about it at all. He's going to talk to yeah. his girlfriend about it. He's going to, or whatever, you know, he's not, it's yeah. amazing. It's going to be amazing. They're not, I think we're the last group that got in our forties and didn't really know what was happening to us. I, I think so too. I feel and hope that that's the case. How are you doing with your, your kids fleeing the nest? This is another, not oh, okay. flying the nest. Boy, why don't you come back to me in September? Maybe we need to have this conversation again when it, when it's quiet. Um, it's going to be, that's going to be good. Okay. I think um, we are a very close family. I think because of the expat part of it too, you rely on your friends and your family unit. I think there is statistics even surrounding that about, we are really, really close. Um, it's going to be a challenge for me. My husband travels every week. So I'm always with the kid that walked in the kitchen before we're kind of a pack. We, we get on each other's nerves, certainly, but we're together a lot. Um, I'm going to miss uh, that. I know that I'm, I'm kind of preparing. And I have a, like I said before, I have so many great friends that are already kind of like, okay. And so in September, I think we're going to book this little getaway, mm -hmm. you know, like a couple of girlfriends doing a spa weekend. Um, so they already know that it's going to hit me harder, I think, than I'm ready for. Yes. So September is going to be a month of a lot of aha moments for me. But also, I see so many women, you know, just loving it and, and reconnecting with their spouse or partner or relationships in their life. So I look forward to it. I also just got to get through it. It's like that bear. You can't go over it, can't go under it. You just got to go through it. Yeah. And that's, that's where I'll be. And you've known for a long time that this was coming and that's always a difficult situation too. When you know yeah. something is coming and you know, it's going to be hard and, oh, now how about, um, not that to get into the particulars of your marriage, but you've had a long, long marriage. And I just, did yeah. you have any, during the times when you moved, did you have shifts? Did you notice shifts with perimenopause? Oh, yeah. yeah. What have you noticed? Great question. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think, you know, I moved when I was 40 to Europe. Um, I think definitely, you know, hormones, hormones really are, if you really track what your hormone, whether it's heart palpitations or hot flashes or sleepless nights or irritability, those were all trending, you know, perimenopause is so many years, all starting and trending. And, and I really look back at it and I can look at times that those were affecting me and my relationship with my husband, for sure. I mean, those things, you know, you're more irritable and he's like, what the heck? And you don't really realize that you're being, being so irritable till you look back and you see, and you're like, wow, I really was. Um, yeah, those were all difficult times for sure. And I think for relationships, yeah, we've almost been married 30 years. We got married very young, right out of college. I think a year, year or two, wow. Tim was a couple of years out. Um, yeah, that, that was a challenge. And I, I, I I do want to let anybody know that's that's moved like I have or anticipating a move, whether it's abroad or out of your community, whatever, you know, do give your partner or spouse a little bit of a grace period too. you know, I feel like that was something that really was a saving grace for my marriage was that when even though it felt like 
we were moving because of him and I was the trailing spouse. So he, you know, he always had the job and the relationships were set for him. He would go and he did his schedule, but you also need to give them six months. I always gave him six months of grace where he needed to acclimate to something new too. And that might not have been hormonal, you know, that type of thing, but it was also, we had to kind of meet each other in the middle. And I think that's the best advice I can give anybody that's going through that because when somebody takes on a new job, they have stresses as well. Um, even though it looks like they're going and they've got a schedule and friends and colleagues, it's really not that easy. So we've been very lucky to, to communicate well and, um, and meet each other where we need to. I like that grace for any transition, right? Any transition at all. You have to, you have to, because it's hard as, as hard as it is on you. It's also hard on that other, that other part too, and trying to keep it all together. Okay. So tell us about your new project. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. So, you know, I had um, pivoted about, uh, I guess it was October 2020. I decided to, I had gotten so much feedback from guests actually, and they wanted to be keynotes and they said, I want you to do an event and I will come and support you and be your keynote. So I, and I really, my heart is really about inspiring women to action. So I decided to do a live event. Well, of course it ended up being a COVID casualty because we sold all these tickets they all had to be refunded. We couldn't pull it off with the level of excellence that we wanted to with all the variants and everything else. People were not comfortable. Um, so we had to cancel that. And that hit me really hard. And, and I talk about it. I just was interviewed recently. And I talked about the fact that that really hit me hard because it was all planned and it was so cool. And everybody had bought tickets. It was like three people from being sold out. And and it didn't happen. I learned about hotel negotiations and contracts and fees and waivers and all things I never thought I would need to know. And I've learned um, some were not great, to be honest, a lot of things when you're planning an event to that scale. But I brought on um, a business partner at that point, two business partners and somebody that I had done work with, with Electra Health and some other companies beforehand. And so Kristen and I kind of partnered on it. And it was funny because, and I love to mention this because she actually picked up the phone and called me and knew that I was planning this big event. And she called me and she said, you know what, listen, I love what you do. I love you. And I want to share the risk with you. Hmm. And that was like an incredible moment for me. Yes. Somebody that is 10 years older than me, that has a wonderful brand and, and just we're like, sisters almost, to be honest, we work very well together. And so we had to pivot from that live event. We started doing some other things. And then the exciting part was, is because I've, you know, been doing live TV and all of these other things, people have kind of picked up on what I'm doing. And they said, Hey, there's a network that really, really wants to stream a show and you got to do it, but this is what you need to do. And if you're willing to do it, run with it. So Kristen and I have now launched with, an, with a team um, of all women, except for our production guys, they're fabulous, um, something called Better Than Gossip, Ageless Advice for Timeless Women. And it will launch, you can watch it on all sorts of, you can stream it. So Apple TV, um, everywhere. Uh, in March, episodes will be dropping and it's all about ageless advice. So it's cross-generational, which gets me a little bit out of the midlife niche. Um, and it's information that you're sharing with your daughters or granddaughters or, you know, information we need to know as women. And it's really amplifying women's brands. You can find it at betterthangossip.com. Okay. Um, it's going to be a podcast. So my Fearlessly Facing 50 is transitioning, which I have a really cool podcast coming out next week. Actually, a mentor of mine um, had me read a book before I did it. And uh, it's, it's very cool. And, and it was time. It's what I call a necessary ending. It's a necessary okay. ending of something that I'm moving on to more greatness. So you've reached this greatness with what you're doing and it's a necessary ending to grow. So I will be transitioning that to the Better Than Gossip podcast, which I will have co-hosts, which is something new for me. Mm. And I'm co-hosting a stream show called Better Than Gossip. So um, stay tuned. It's, it's super exciting. Um, the amount of support has been incredible, but from our standpoint, it's amplifying brands that women need to know about and stories that so it's everything I do but it's bringing it to tv oh I can't wait and the name is amazing better than gossip I absolutely love that isn't that awesome yeah okay. yeah I, I yeah that's very exciting I'm going to check it out all the best I'm going to keep in touch with you because you're one of those people who reached out in the beginning and I'm a huge admirer thank you so much thank you thank you I I'm proud of what you're doing you know what and it's not easy right <laughs> no, I mean, it's not easy. And, and I love your perseverance and 
the fact that you made it happen and also the fact that Amory was able to, what was it? Were you in a bikini or just whatever? Well, like I was on, on the my cover birthday? of my book in a suit. Yes. On my birthday when I took put a video about, yeah. Yes. On my 51st birthday. Yeah. 51st birthday. So I, you know what? You own that moment. And I hope that you sit back and really at times just go, man, I'm a badass. Like that was really, that's, that was pivotal for you. Well, I think we have to do stuff like, you don't have to necessarily be in a bikini, but you've got to do stuff like this because I, when I was 30, just thought this age would just be the end. I never literally looked past. I thought, I don't know what I thought I would be doing. And then you get here and you're like, oh my gosh, I have all this wisdom and experience and energy and vision, even though you sometimes don't have it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You look fabulous. You look fabulous. It's actually going. And and questions you have, anything, you know, reach out because um, it's important and, and make sure that you know, because I know how busy it is being a podcaster and trying to do everything and make sure that you time block for some time just yes. for you. I hit that so. this week for sure. I have to do that. So I might come to you. I know you're really busy right now, but I might come back to you and just get, ask you some questions about how to proceed and where I should focus. Cause you get, you know, like my business mentor sponsor, who's kind of my mentor, she has different ideas than me. And I want to know, like, you know, it's hard to know, I got to let you go, but it's hard to know your own core, but I'm not a business person. Am I wrong? Or like, should I take, you know what I'm talking about? Right. Yeah. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Jump on a 15. Yeah. We'll just take time. Yeah, certainly. Okay. Later when you have time, I'll, I'll come Proud back. Proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so for much. having me. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.